ancient, mysterious, reaching skywards and deep down into the earth. Trees fascinate some artists more than any landscape, human face or figure can do. Their work is diverse, ranging from the figurative and representational to near abstract. But the source of their inspiration is the same, silent, substantial and rooted in nature. Hello, I'm Robert Eagle and I'm curating an exhibition that due to this damned virus, may or may not be opening in early June. So we're putting it online, and for your added viewing pleasure, we're including some extras from the artists themselves. My interest in artists who love trees started with David Rolt, who was born in 1915. This striking self-portrait was made in 1941, when he was in his 30s. Disabled since birth, but socially well-connected, Rolt painted portraits for a living, but for love, he painted trees. He was fascinated by how trees appear to change from hour to hour in changing light. Neither a modernist nor a traditionalist, he developed a portrait painter's affinity for his subject, though his paintings also reflect the wildly fluctuating emotional climate of his own life, sometimes sun-drenched, sometimes wintry bleak. He drew and painted trees in oils and in watercolour. In Ireland, in the south of France, and in the English home counties. In the 1970s and 80s, elm trees once a major feature of the British countryside, were being decimated by Dutch elm disease. They became a focus of Rolt's work as the end of his own life drew closer. A few months ago, 35 years after David Rolt's death, I was introduced to some artists who are very much alive and who share that love for trees and see them as a symbol of nature under threat. An association of about 50 very diverse painters active in Britain and France, they call themselves the Arborealists. This exhibition introduces you to just a few of them and provides links to help you discover many more. This is their founder, Tim Craven. And trees are a subject a close to the heart of many British or English artists. The Arborealist is a loose association, an artist collective. Uh, there are no rules, there's no constitution, people don't pay for subscriptions, so they don't expect anything back, really. And uh, what I wanted, um, above all, was to, was to have diversity of art practice. And it all coalesces, it all unifies around a single subject of the tree. Which works, because we have semi-abstract artists, we have expressionist artists, we have realist artists, uh, we have all sorts of different medium and scale, and they, 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 they connect, they, they have synergies which link to each other. So hanging these shows are really quite exciting, because you can put, you can place works side by side, and uh, there's something for everybody. Tim Craven founded the Arborealists in 2013. His own work is very much at the realist end of the spectrum, Remarkable considering that he works largely in watercolour, not an easy medium for achieving a highly detailed rendition. After a number of years I got, I suppose, tired of traditional landscape painting, which is panoramic if you like, and the lines are horizontal. The sky, the, the, the distance, the middle, they're always horizontal bands. And what attracted me especially to trees was the verticals. The verticals are a dynamic the dynamic shapes you get in trees. Other painters in the group are preoccupied by colour and their work is much more abstract. Fiona McIntyre lives and works in the Cotswolds. Trees and nature are a great passion of mine and have always been very important in my work. I spend a lot of time outdoors drawing in all weathers and then develop the paintings later on in the studio. There's a sort of lyricism to some of these trees. They've got very elegant branches growing up towards the light. I think that's one of the things that I like about trees, that appeals to me about trees. 
and of course the colour, because colour really attracts me. Using colour symbolically and creating different resonances by how I place particular colours together, they start to vibrate off each other. I want it to be very spontaneous and look as if it's been done very quickly. But quite often, a painting can take several months in fact. I might remove the paint several times before I manage to somehow create that fluidity and spontaneity. We encounter even more vivid use of colour in the work of London-based artist Nahim Shoa. Though the finished image may seem otherworldly, his work starts with close observation of the tree in its natural habitat. I tried to get to their real spirit and they're brilliant because they're very good sitters. Nahim made his name painting people, striking unconventional portraits in larger than life scale. He introduced expansive formats into his treescapes too. This work, Other Worlds, is three and a half meters wide. It's a real challenge drawing and painting in nature. You have the weather to contend with, flies, a rain, etc. But that's why it really digs deep into your heart and you can't let it out. News from Nowhere takes its title from William Morris's utopian novel, which was written in 1890 and set in London in the 22nd century. From Hyde Park to Croydon was one huge forest. My painting is also a seamless forest. The red fiery sky is a reference to all the forest fires that are happening around the world on an apocalyptic level right now in places like Australia and the Amazon. The work of Michael Porter based in Cornwall, could hardly be more different. The treescapes he presents are microcosmic. All my paintings in the last few years have dealt with looking very minutely at the landscape. So you look at the landscape and you see more and more and more things the more you look. I don't paint vistas. I paint the earth. Obviously sometimes there are trees on it but I'm much more drawn to the, the ephemera within the, within the landscape. The things that, that are often overlooked, the discarded leaf, the odd pine cone, the bit of mushroom, the crab apple that's just fallen from, from the tree, the clump of grass, these things that are uh, are the essence of the place. I try and make a painting which we look into, where things are overlapped and painted over and then painted over again and overlapped again. And you discover within the surface of the painting all these tiny little bits of reality. And I'm trying to bring these things together. What I'm trying to do is make something which is akin to being in the landscape. So it's, it's not only a painting, it's the essence of the landscape. It's the atmosphere of the landscape. And if I can get halfway there, then I think maybe I've succeeded. Painting trees might seem a pleasantly restful activity, but it can also be a very lonely business. Being part of the Arborealists, I think, is wonderful because it helps to give a context to what one is doing. You know, it's, it's difficult to just work in isolation. And it, it actually makes it more interesting because you realise we all have this subject matter in common, but we all come to it from a very different perspective and we all pull different things out of it. Jacqueline Wedlake Hatton's work is inspired by ancient woodlands in her native Cornwall and on Dartmoor, where the wildness of the terrain can produce unusually shaped trees. I'd 
come out of a period of doing very conceptual work, which I've found unsatisfactory on an emotional level and felt that what I wanted to do was get back in touch with a subject which engaged me, could have actually devoted myself to painting flowers, but I felt that trees had more of a presence. That was the beginning of uh, a whole body of work that has absorbed me entirely since that time. Like David Rolt, Philippa Beale is fascinated by how trees appear to change from day to day, hour to hour. For me, painting and composition are more important than painting particular trees or views. My function is to find new original ways of painting. Making painting is hard enough, but making a painting of a particular place is very difficult. Uh, this is a place that I've drawn often. It's outside my bedroom window in France and there really are these trees and the ducks really do fly past and this painting is called Food and Fuel uh, because um, the ducks might fly past but they also might get shot down and end up in someone's pot. These trees are very often grown for fuel um, and they've been there uh, a long time but Apparently they're going to be cut down soon, as it will be in memoriam of the trees. The historical context of our lives has been quite literally grown from trees. They've inspired temples, cathedrals and deities. They provide shelter, harbour nature in all its forms, and in a real sense keep us alive. The final arborealist in our exhibition is Stella Carr, pictured here exactly how one might imagine a tree painter in her element. Her work ranges from the figurative, recording her subject with a botanist's eye, to a kind of magic realism in which the scientific gaze is enhanced by the artist's emotion and imagination, sometimes reminiscent of the 19th century painter Samuel Palmer. In her oil paintings, she often works and scores the surface of the paint, creating a sense of movement and urgency. Well, thank you very much for watching. As we record this, we still have no real idea whether the exhibition at Berghaus will be able to go ahead. But whatever, you can still see pictures for sale by all the artists in the online catalogue which also contains links to much interesting and related material.